What is going on guys, Series here. In today's video, I'm bringing you guys something that's going to lay the foundation for a new series that I'm working on called Reversing Black Ops 2. This is gonna be a series where I go through and show you guys how I actually reverse Black Ops 2 and how I set up all of my tools and things like that so that you guys can follow along and learn more about reverse engineering in general, learn more about coding, and learn more about how the Black Ops 2 executable actually works. Now, these principles that I'm going over in this series will actually apply to a lot of other games, but we're using Black Ops 2 because it's where I have the most expertise. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably think that I know a lot more than I do, but I'll tell you right now, I am still a very, very beginner uh, reverser, or you know, whatever you want to call it. I have been working on this for quite a while, but at the same time, you know, I'm still learning all the time. So that being said, you guys can learn with me while I'm doing this series. Um, it's going to be like kind of a cutcom style. I'm going to kind of just go over the things that are most important when I'm doing it so you guys don't have to sit there and watch a two hour video of me going through Black Ops 2 uh, every single time you want to see, you know, whatever the main point is in the video. Anyway, all that being said, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get set up for the rest of the series. All of my other videos are going to actually link back to this video because um, I know a lot of you guys are going to want to follow along. Um, and some of you guys might not. That's fine. You don't have to follow along. Uh, I'm going to produce source for everything that I do in these videos. Um, it'll probably only be like a paste bin link, but you know, same thing. Um, I'll just, you know, put source in for the people who don't want to follow. Or the people who do, this is how you're going to get set up to, you know, follow along through the entire series. This is also going to help you get set up for if you want to do your own reversing of Black Ops 2, if you want to do your own things, because I might not necessarily be doing what you're really interested in uh, in a video, so you might decide to go off by yourself, and that's totally fine. Anyway. Let's go ahead and get this started. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and get IDA. Um, IDA is a reverse engineering software you use to basically go through an executable and you know reverse everything about it. Uh, you get things like the strings, the functions, you get the assembly view, you get uh, it builds uh, something called xrefs, which are basically the, the pointers used throughout the entire um, the entire program. Tons and tons of stuff. I couldn't go over all of it even if I tried. Hell, I bet I haven't even used, you know, 20% or I'm sorry, 80% uh, of the features in IDA. So, you know, I, I'm no IDA expert, but I will tell you that this is what we're going to be using for the series. Um, IDA is not the only reverse engineering software for this stuff. Um, and if you are more comfortable with something else, go ahead and use it. And I'm sure if you have already been using something else, you are more than experienced enough to be able to translate what I'm doing in IDA to your software of choice. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into how you can actually obtain IDA for yourself. So IDA is a paid software, but they do have a freeware version. So we're gonna go ahead and search free IDA really quickly. I can link this in the description. You are going to, I have not actually used uh, 7.0 and I have not used the free version of IDA at all. So I don't know what it supports, but I would assume that it probably supports uh, the executables that I'm gonna be using in this tutorial. We're gonna be using redacted to reverse things. so. Um, you know, it, it should work. We're just gonna be using a uh, 32 bit x86, which should be supported by 7.0. Anyway, you can go ahead and download and install it here. If it doesn't actually support it, which I'm sorry in advance, if it doesn't, uh, you're gonna want to go ahead and get the paid version. Obviously I support paying for the full version and helping the creators by paying for the software that they work so hard on. So obviously you're gonna have to pay for it. I know it's very expensive, but you know, you're gonna have to pay for it. <clears throat> oh, oops, I'm sorry, I just, uh, <laughs> I clicked on the wrong tab there. Anyway, um, once you have IDA downloaded and installed, uh, you're also going to need for this series to get the Black Ops 2 debugging database. So the way you're going to do that is just go ahead and search. I can't link this in the video, guys, so don't ask me um, because technically this is leaked information, so I am not able to actually link this uh, because of legal reasons. So we're gonna go ahead and do COD MP server BO2 PDB. Look that up. You should get a few links here and there. Um, you might wanna, you know, change it, whatever, but this is what we're looking for. Um, and you'll get a link. If you guys can find it, good, good for you. If you can't find it, um, I'm sure somebody in the comments can help you out, but I am not at liberty to disclose the link to this. So you guys are gonna have to get it on your own. So once you download it, you're gonna get these two files. Um, they're going to be the actual executable of the dedicated server and you're actually going to also get this uh, debugging file which we're going to use to actually get all the information about the executable so that we can reverse it a bit easier. Um, without this, your life is a lot harder because you have to manually identify structures and things like that. Um, this is going to make it a lot easier. 
Um, you're still gonna have to manually reverse the other executables, but it's much easier because you can use um, identifying features such as strings, uh, functions, structures, etc., to actually navigate your your way around. You're, I mean, this is just gonna make your life a lot easier. We're gonna go ahead and load up Ida really quickly. Um, you're only gonna need the 32-bit. If you have the 64-bit, good for you, but you don't need it. Um, these are 32-bit executables running on the x86 architecture. So we're just gonna use the 32-bit version of Ida. Go ahead and hit go, and then just drag and drop this into Ida. It's gonna be a P executable. We're gonna use Meta PC, and that's all you need. As long as those are set up, you're good. Um, it's gonna say, do you wanna look for this file at the local symbol store, whatever, right? Hit yes. Um, it should automatically find it. Um, if As long as you see, oh, well, this isn't working. Anyway, it's kind of under my thing, but um, you can see uh, 17,117 types, whatever, right? That's right. So I'm going to go ahead and close this because I don't actually need a new database to be set up. Um, if Ida will actually allow me to do that. Ida? Ida, please? I think it's this one. There we go. Okay. Okay, so um, it's gonna take you a bit for your for your file to load and everything, especially if you have a slow computer because there is a lot of information in that debugging database. But once it's up, you're gonna see something like this. Um, you should have like, you're not gonna have all these windows, but I'll show you how to get to them whenever we need them. Um, but the main thing you'll wanna see is that you have all these functions. If you just see a bunch of sub whatever, sub whatever, um, that means you didn't actually load the, the uh, PDB. You're gonna wanna go ahead and hit load file and hit uh, PDB and then you'll actually navigate to the PDB file. But if you do have all this, then you're good. Everything's good. You can keep following along from here. Basically just get, kind of get used to the way Ida looks. Um, you're gonna have the assembly and the Ida view windows. You might have a graph view um, when it first finishes. Uh, that's dumb. I don't use it, but you know, some people do. So um, you can just hit disassembly if you ever wanna get to disassembly. You're also gonna see the functions window over here. This is a list of all the functions and their parameters, things like that. Um, you've got your local type structures, enumerations, etc. What we're focused on really quickly, I want to see, hopefully you guys have access to the actual decompiler function in the free version of Ida. Uh, if you press F5, you should actually get the decompiled version of the function. If you don't have access to that, you're going to need to get the, the paid version of Ida if you want this to be easy for you. As you guys can see, I picked a function that a lot of people probably already know about. See so above add text, just to show you guys, you can get the source of the actual function. Um, you can rename variables, etc. We're not worried about that in this video. I'm just worried about getting you guys set up. So as long as you can see all this kind of stuff and everything works out for you, then you are good to go. Um, you're also going to probably need some other functions. Uh, I have Notepad open all of the time when I'm working because it's good for writing notes, writing things down, whatever. Uh, you'll probably also want to have Chrome available to you. Uh, Chrome, you know, just, I mean... You could also use the calculator on Windows, but I like to just use Chrome. That way you can do things like hex conversions, etc. cetera. Um, those are important because there's a lot of different things that you're gonna wanna be doing uh, with Ida. You also wanna go ahead and get redacted. Um, I can't link you to that, but it's just called BO2 redacted. Um, you'll wanna get the latest version because that's how we're going to actually reverse uh, Black Ops 2 and, and you know test our changes. Also, for this series, you're going to want to get GSX Studio because I'm going to be using that a lot. So you'll go to gsxstudio.net slash installer.exe and just, you know, do that and get the installer and install it. If you already have it, good to go. You're going to want to get HXD. HXD is very important because it's how we're going to connect to the process memory to debug. Um, you can also use IDA to do that, but I think, I think Redacted will kick you out because it's got a, a debug trap. So um, you just want to get HXD, HXD is... Awesome software, super simple, super lightweight. Uh, get any version, doesn't matter. Other than that, I think we're good to go. Looks like it. And that should be it for this video, guys. Um, you're also probably going to want to get Visual Studio if you don't have it, because we might do some RTM stuff later, but um, we're going to be sticking mainly with GSX memory editing, so... Yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's the setup video. As far as what I'm going to be uploading in the future, I'm going to be uploading probably tomorrow or the next day. Because these videos take a really long time, guys. You don't you don't realize that, you know, when I'm reversing, I'll spend six or seven hours reversing one thing. And cutting that down to a 15-minute video is a lot harder than it looks. 
Um, so I might also upload the raw footage sometime, but uh, for now I'm going to stick with, you know, cutting them down to about 15 minutes. I don't know how long this video is going to be um, because I've just been talking for a really long time, but I think it'll be around 15 minutes. So other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. If you think this is a good idea, bad idea, whatever. Um, if you have any other suggestions, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.